Are you looking to buy manufacturing equipment heading into a recession? We all know we're going to a recession, but I'm gonna tell you, my top clients are doing just this, to get ahead and to separate from the competition and to gain market share. So if you stay to the end and comment guide, I'll make sure we leave you the guide and we're gonna go over the best tips and tricks that I know so you can get into the best financing program possible for you to get that equipment and start growing your business. Now, I've been doing this for 15 years and I've helped thousands of business owners just like you get millions of dollars to grow their business. All right, so what I want you to do is take notes and really, really stick to the tips and tricks that I'm gonna tell you in this video to help you position your business the best way possible. In this video, I'm gonna tell you the best ways, the seven tips and tricks on how to get into the best equipment financing programs possible, right? And first off, know where you stand. So when I say know where you stand, you wanna know what you need to focus on to get the best rates and the best terms. You need to know what your personal credit is, what your business credit is, all right? And obviously your time in business, all right? Those are the three main factors that you need to focus on when you're purchasing equipment and getting it financed, all right? The other factor is if it's over 200,000, then you have to worry about your financials and your tax returns because they are gonna look at profit margins and your ability to service the debt, all right? The next thing, have everything ready. What do I mean by that? Well, typically, if it's under 100,000, you have really good credit, we just really need an app and a couple banks and the invoice. But what you should prepare and send in regardless is an application, the last six months of business bank statements, a driver's license, avoided check, a tax return, your most recent business tax return, and the invoice for the piece of equipment that you wanna purchase. And if it's used, a purchase and sale agreement will do just fine. But you wanna have it ready so you can move quick and you don't lose that piece of equipment. I can't tell you how many people stall or wait to get the documents in when they have a piece of equipment they like, and then from that point, it's already been sold. All right, next, shop for the right invoice, okay? Do your due diligence on the piece of equipment you're getting, okay? And figure out where you wanna go, because right now, a lot of vendors that are selling equipment, some of them, you have to wait, you know, four weeks. I've even had one client that had to wait six months for the equipment to be made and delivered. So my point being, see what they have in stock, okay? See what's gonna make the biggest impact for your business and then get that invoice right away. Next, pick out the right piece of equipment, all right? Do your research on the equipment, all right? It's always easier to finance newer pieces of equipment or brand new pieces of equipment than it is used. We can do both. And then if it's used, you're gonna need a purchase and sale agreement with the make, model, um, miles, VIN number, condition, all of those items. All right, so the biggest thing, pick the right piece of equipment and understand how it's gonna help your business. All right, get a model that isn't going to break down, that has great reviews. All right, next, build comparable debt. This is a big one. I can't tell you how many clients I've helped after they ran into this issue. So what comparable debt is, is showing that you have like or similar equipment that you financed in the past that'll be on your business credit report. Uh, sometimes it goes on your personal credit report, but that's because the equipment was bought the wrong way or financed the wrong way. So comparable debt is just you buying a piece of equipment and having it financed. Here's why that's important, because as you build comparable debt, you are showing the underwriters that you can afford the payment and that you are willing to pay it back, which will get you approved for a higher dollar amount at a better rate. All right, I had a client one time, I'll just tell you a quick story. I had a client one time who had uh, good credit and she had a great business. And she came in and she wanted to finance $2.1 million of trucks and trailers. The challenge was she had no comparable debt, meaning she didn't finance any of the trucks that she had and most of them were uh, the owner operators. So that created one challenge and the other challenge, which she had a divorce in the past. So even though she had a good credit score, the, the divorce credit didn't fall off yet. <clears throat> so that created a challenging situation to get the financing done. So it's always, always better to have a lot of comparable debt 
So even if it's a small piece of equipment, like 10,000 or 15,000 or 25,000, still have that finance. Plus cash is always king. All right, next, understand your numbers. Understand exactly what this piece of equipment is gonna do for you. How much revenue is it gonna bring in? How much profit is it gonna bring in? All right, what the payment's going to be versus the additional uh, revenue it's, it, that's coming into your business. If you understand those numbers, it's very easy to explain to an underwriter why we should get that approved and why we should get you the best rate. All right, I've been doing this 14 years, I'm telling you. I know a thing or two about this, so please pay attention. And also, before we wrap up here, please make sure to leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. All right, leave a comment and I will, get, I will send you out a uh, free gift once you comment. And now next, know what your options are and where to go. This is super important, all right? Do you wanna finance it, meaning do you wanna purchase it? Do you wanna lease it? Or do you wanna do a, a, a lease with a $1 buyout? All right, now, if you're purchasing it, it's just a straight purchase and you're paying a monthly payment. So you can write off all the interest. If you're leasing it, the entire lease payment can get done that way. Meaning that the whole lease payment gets written off. Now, if you do a lease with a $1 buyout, all right, I would still tell you to check with your accountant. This is not financial advice. However, if you do a lease, you can write off that payment and then you can own it at the end for a dollar. All right, that's important. A lot of people don't offer that. Next, where to go? You can either go to your bank, you can go to a dealership, or you could use a marketplace like us. A marketplace like us, we're gonna shop for the best rate and term and the best options for you, All right? That's why it's so important to know exactly where to go. We are here to help you. If you have any questions, please drop them below and we will get back to you. Thank you. I hope you took down notes. Don't forget, make sure you write guide so I can get you the guide absolutely free. It'll have everything we just went over in more depth. And if you need our help, just type, I'm ready to get the financing today, or I'm ready, and we will reach out to you and personally help you get the equipment that you need to grow your business as seamlessly and painlessly as possible. And we will make sure that we get you into the best terms you possibly qualify for. Thanks for watching.